The RV Show USA is brought to you by Flagstaff, building better RVs, making smarter RVers. All right, welcome back to the most listened to, most talked about show in the country when it comes to RVing and the RV lifestyle. I am the RV wingman, Alan Warren, and our next guest knows a thing or two about how to keep things cool in the fridge in your RV, which is something many folks struggle with. Welcome to the RV Show USA, Roger Ford. Hello, Alan. Thank you for being with us. So you run the you run Ford RV Refrigeration Training Center. What's the 30-second elevator pitch for that, and how long have you been doing it? Well, I've been in refrigeration since 1978 and specializing in the RV refrigerator since 1984. So we have serviced a lot of refrigerators through the years, and we've been training people. Uh, we're actually a Kentucky State School and train people that have come from all over the world. I wonder how many RV refrigerators have been dumped into a, a landfill somewhere over the years. Can you just imagine? Probably a mountain of them. Well, unfortunately, you're absolutely right. Um, in fact, there was an article by uh, Gary Bunzer that he wrote about us, and uh, in that article he said that many cooling units are simply misdiagnosed and thrown away. I, I've heard the same thing. Now, I know the objective of a fridge is to keep things cold. In general, are today's refrigerators as efficient? Do they last as long as refrigerators made, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago? Talk to me about quality and efficiency real quickly. The refrigerators that are made today are a good product. Um, they will last for many years. And, um, you know, we have people that we have serviced the refrigerator over 10 years ago. They're still using them, still happy. And we have people out there even longer than that. I think the cooling units that were made 30 years ago, they were a heavier gauge metal. I, I like those better, but they are an efficient, good product for the RV right now. Mm. What are the two or three biggest issues that people have with their RV refrigerator, Roger? I mean, what 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 kind of things do people have problems with? I guess keeping well, things cool. Well, the number one complaint that we have heard from the beginning in, in 37 years is that the freezer's freezing, and the refrigerator is not staying cold enough. And too often what we hear from RV owners through the years is that they've been someplace and they were told that it was a bad cooling unit or they need a new refrigerator. And I want people to understand that there are over 20 other things that can cause that symptom besides needing a cooling unit or a new refrigerator, and there are much more economical repair. What are are there any things that we should do to maintain the refrigerator? I mean, the, the common sense stuff is keep the door closed. You know, don't keep opening the thing up and you know, open closed, open closed. But what what things should we do to maintain um, to get the maximum efficiency out of our RV's fridge? The best thing I can recommend to anybody is to get a little education because most of the problems that happen to an RV refrigerator is something that a do-it-yourselfer could do themselves or at least know what the problem is so when they take it to an RV service center, they'll be educated enough to know whether there be... Well, I hear, I mean, I, I think most of the time when I talk to somebody at, a, at an RV dealership, I say that, you know, that, that so-and-so's got a, a fridge that won't work. They say, well, throw it away and buy a new one. And it sounds like to me you're telling me that, that refri don't do that for multiple reasons. Right. That's not the answer. Um, you know, again, there's too many simple things, economical things that it can be. Um, you know, when we first started this years ago back in 84, we heard pe people were coming in saying just that. We were told to throw it away and buy a new one we were able to repair it. Now, we thought this was a lack of education in our western Kentucky area. But once we got started getting people coming in from out, out of state for service, and once we started training people from around the U.S. and other countries, they all have said the exact same thing. It's, it's the same in their area. What do you, you know, train? A lack of education. What do you train me to do? If I come to you know, the Ford RV Refrigeration Training Center, take your classes, what do I learn? 
I mean, what if I don't want to be a, a technician? What is it still worth my time to come to come to the class? Well, definitely. Um, you know, we offer about a three-hour class and a six-hour class. And if you'll bring your RV here, which most people do, uh, they're traveling or they'll make a trip here, and we'll tr- teach them how to troubleshoot and repair their refrigerator. W- which one is better, a, a residential fridge? I know a lot of people have, are choosing a residential fridge now versus a traditional R- RV refrigerator. Which one's better, in your opinion, and why? Well, in my opinion, the RV refrigerator is the best because you have your options for LP or AC. Um, It's a good product. And I think what has led, this is just my opinion for being in in this industry for many years, what has led the people to go to the home refrigerator, the domestic refrigerator, is that they've been to so many places and they were told that it's fixed and then they leave and it's not repaired and to replace it buy a new one well they're giving the rv refrigerator a bad name it's a good product if you have a tech that knows what they're doing that refrigerator will last you for over 20 years why why are rv refrigerators so expensive well that's a good question alan (laughs) Um, about four years ago, I was called up to the uh, Dometic factory up in Elkhart. And, you know, I asked them the same question, and every, um, and I never got a good answer. <laughs> but uh, I think it's just demand. Really? But, you know, yeah, and again, it goes back to it could be repaired for a lot less money than replacing it. What about, you know, I, I, I've watched many of your YouTube videos, and folks, we're going to give you the address uh, YouTube channel here in just a bit. If you have any questions about refrigeration in your RV, you need to go to Roger's YouTube channel. But uh, talk to me about there are some actual RVs that have got design flaws, engineering flaws, the way they're built. And the from what I understand, they don't uh, breathe properly and allow the refrigerator, the heat coming from the fridge, to escape, and that can be an issue. How do we know what to look for when we're shopping for an RV to avoid one of those uh, poorly designed units? Well, the best thing I can recommend is watch our videos, and that'll give you some education on what to look for. Um, the other is, you know, get some education somewhere, whether you come here or whether you go anywhere, but just get educated so you know the things to look out for, the good things, and to stay away from the bad things. But you're right. The, uh, you know, through the years we've had a problem with the refrigerator. We would call the manufacturer of the refrigerator. They'd say, oh, that's the RV manufacturer's fault. We would call the RV manufacturer. They say, oh, no, that's the uh, uh, refrigerator manufacturer's fault. They just keep passing the buck. So the key is get educated. It is a good product. But but it's not, as I understand it, it's not the manufacturer, not the RV manufacturer's fault if the refrigerator goes bad. I hear some people saying, well, I'm not going to buy another one of those RVs because the fridge was so bad or the AC was bad. It, those are Both of those come from uh, not from the manufacturer. They come from somebody like Norcold or Dometic. Right? Correct. But the RV manufacturers, and there's some videos out there that, uh, to prove this, that the RV manufacturers are not installing them properly. And a lot of that has to do Mm. with just airflow. So the airflow, the ventilation needs to be corrected. Once that's done, it's okay. But somebody needs to talk to those engineers and teach them (laughs) about ventilation (laughs) all right listen roger we are up against the clock tell everybody our listeners how they can find out more well if you go to rvrefrigeration.com all right simple Uh, and then a lot of information on there um and hopefully that'll help you Uh, we're always putting up new videos um so if the answer is not there, what you're looking for, just keep checking back and hopefully it'll be up soon good deal all right we'll get you back on as the weather gets warmer thank you roger Alan, take care, and uh, thank you. All right, you betcha. All right, before we close today's show, everybody, I want to leave you with a thought, and uh, I may expand on it next week. There's no doubt that we are all going through some very stressful, trying times, from the health side, which is horrible, to the economic side, which some believe may even be worse. 
Feeling down, feeling discouraged, feeling hopeless is totally understandable. But I would like to suggest with, with all due respect to choose hope over hopelessness, to choose faith over fear. When dealing with others, choose kindness over criticism. You know, as the RV wingman, I believe that I've been given a gift and an opportunity. The gift is a gift of faith and belief and knowing that the, the better days are ahead for all of us. And I know they are. And the opportunity to encourage people, inspire people to be their very best. No matter how down you may feel, please know that there is a. this is all a part of the plan. It really is. And you are stronger, smarter, more patient, more resourceful than you may think. And there's a spirit that's alive inside of you that will help guide you if you just let it in. Until next week, I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yeehaw.